Goblins are a paradox. They are the characteristic creature type for red, which is why their skin is green. Now, there are some red-skinned goblins. You see, green-skinned goblins are cunningly brutal, while red-skinned goblins are brutally cunning. It's okay if you get this confused. Goblins who aren't very bright also get this confused and will often go to war over which one is which. Goblins are a paradox. They love going to war but usually die as soon as the fighting begins. They are small and frail, but will pick fights with the biggest bruiser that they can find, and goblins genuinely believe that they will win. Goblins are these stupid, dim-witted little creatures, but can't stop building the most powerful explosives in the multiverse. Goblins are a paradox. They are lazy, selfish, narcissistic, psychopaths, but they are the hastiest creature type, chock full of synergy with other goblins. See, goblins only care about one thing, and that's breaking stuff. It doesn't matter if it's your life total, the devices on their side of the battlefield, or even their own arm as they bring it down on your head. As long as something breaks, a goblin is happy. And everything is a game to a goblin, a nasty little Sudoku with a barbed minus sign attached to each number. A Sudoku that they will tear into pieces to use as kindling for a bonfire that they desperately want to toss you in. Goblins don't just bite the hand that feeds, they will gnaw it off at the wrist because that's more food. They don't just build a catapult, they build a catapult that launches a nuclear warhead, which the goblin who built it will ride until detonation. And a goblin will not hesitate to use such a device to settle a minor personal dispute. But at the end of the day, goblins in Magic the Gathering aren't evil, at least not in a human way. Goblins are evil in the same way a barracuda is evil or a tornado is evil. Or to be more accurate, a tornado of barracudas that is also on fire is evil. Goblins lack the necessary comprehension to know what they are doing is wrong. They can't be blamed for their actions any more than they can be stopped. Today, we will be taking a deeper dive into the goblin creature type and finding out what exactly makes them tick. Goblins can be found in all five colors of mana. Of all types and colors, colorless artifact goblins are the smallest portion. This makes sense, as destroying artifacts, especially their own, is a favored pastime of goblins. Goblins are abundant in the multiverse, which is particularly surprising as there seem to be very few female goblins. This indicates that goblins reproduce in large litters. Further elaboration on goblin reproductive habits will not be explored in order to keep this video on YouTube. Instead, the following section will explore the various types and tribes of goblins which can be found in Magic the Gathering's multiverse. Alara In the plane of Alara, goblins are found in the quote, inhospitable, end quote, world of Yund. This seems to be a minor plot hole in Magic the Gathering, as this world is clearly hospitable to goblins, humans and Viashino, each of which survive mostly due to their great numbers. Jund goblins are bestial, with small red eyes, long snouts and powerful incisors. They are coated in brown hair and can run on all fours, able to wriggle their bodies into confined spaces when danger is near. And while many are certain that there are differences between Jund goblins and rats, none have been found to date. Starving groups of Jund goblins will sometimes organize raids on the more verdant lands below them. However, it is rare when these raids do not end in disaster. Raiders are picked off by predators, carnivorous plants, or their own incompetence, or the entire party is devoured by a fire elemental or some other monstrosity. The goal of such raids is for at least one goblin to return with food for at least two. The unspoken truth about these raids is that they're a form of population control. Harkavios. In the plain of Arcavios, there are only a few goblins represented. This may be due to goblins' relatively low numbers in the plain, or their low intelligence preventing them from entering Strixhaven, the school of wizards. However, it is known that one goblin keeps trying to apply to Strixhaven by shouting apply at the administrators, rather than showcasing any talents and skills. Dominaria In the plain of Dominaria, many goblin nations dwell in areas close to mountains or deserts. This seems to be a bold strategy, as these regions, such as Shiv, 
are also home to dragons, the main predator of the goblin. Shivan goblins were brought to the region by the Thran and experience a mortality rate due to dragon fire almost on par with their mortality rate due to infighting over whether or not scissors beats rock, or if there really is such a thing as paper. Other notable goblin breeds are the Rundvelt, Ock and Mog, the later of which has a high rate of mutation in its gene pool. How one can tell if a goblin is mutated, or if it just looks like that, it's a matter of debate between Dominarian scholars. Rundvelt goblins are less a nation and more of a horde. They have become dangerous due to their recent technological innovation, the toboggan. The Otaria goblins found their tribal name to be too hard to pronounce, and call themselves the Skirk. They are enthusiastically enamored with fire and explosions, often to their detriment. They are even more reckless than most other goblins, if possible. And while there are a myriad of other goblinoids in Dominaria, the last one of note for this video will be Razorfin goblins, which are crossbreeds between merfolk and goblins. Again, speculation of the reproduction necessary to create such a crossbreed will not be deliberated on. Eldraine. In the plain of Eldraine, goblins are known as redcaps just as they are in Shadowmoor. Goblins have mostly been purged from the realm by questing adventurers. Only once was peaceful coexistence attempted with the Redcaps. This ended when the goblin diplomats got into a violent scuffle with a group of knights over whose shadows weighed the most. In the wilds, Eldraine's dwarves have had a long-standing feud with its Redcaps, caused long ago by a dispute over a spoon, though it has raged for so long that no one can quite recall how this feud started. It is known that the conflict boiled over in a massive food fight, ending in 12,000 goblin casualties. Hexatlan. In the plain of Hexatlan, there are two distinct goblin breeds. The first are monkey-like goblins which dwell in the jungles surrounding the Sun Empire. Many of these goblins were indoctrinated into the pirate fleets of the Brazan coalition. These monkey goblins are notorious for their silly pranks, like stealing their captain's hat or stabbing him in the brain. The other breed of goblin is known as the Deep Goblin. They dwell far beneath the surface of the world, paling their skin to the point of translucence. And while some have developed bioluminescence to adapt to their surroundings, there is no indication that Deep Goblins have developed any sort of complex brain. Kamigawa In the plain of Kamigawa, the Aki clan are goblins who are obsessed with fire almost as much as they are obsessed with mischief. Their backs are coated in barbed shells, which help defend them from falling rocks thrown by other Aki goblins. Lorwyn Shadowmoor In the plain of Lorwyn Shadowmoor there exist a high variety of goblins. The first are the Bogarts. Bogarts have a wide array of physiological structures and genotypes. Bogarts are highly fertile and believe in reincarnation. They have no problem casually killing fellow Bogarts, since they'll be reborn in a matter of days or even hours. The matriarch of the Bogarts are the aunties, though there are a few male aunties. Aunties are the oldest and wisest of the goblins, often living as long as ten entire years. In Shadowmoor, the Bogarts are much more sinister, nailing pieces of scrap to their own bodies. However, some Shadowmoor Bogarts have learned that you can just wear the armor too. Shadowmoor also has its own unique race of goblins, known as the Hobgoblins. These goblins are as peaceful as goblins can reasonably be, only bringing their farm equipment when they go to war several times a year. Redcaps and Spriggans are also only found in Shadowmoor. Each of these goblin varieties appears to be in a perpetual state of anger. In the case of Redcaps, it might be due to their red hair, which means they don't have souls. For Spriggans, it might be because their entire species name sounds like an ethnic slur. Mercadia. In the plain of Mercadia, goblins were used by the Phyrexians as slaves. However, as time went on, the goblins took over more responsibilities, as their human masters fell to decadence. The most notable goblin form Mercadia is Squee the Immortal, and he is immortal. The Phyrexians put this to the test on innumerable occasions, much to Squee's dismay. Miradan. In a plane made entirely of metal, goblins find a way. Residing in Oxida, the Krak clan worship the Great Furnace as a deity, and not just because it is so efficient at melting goblins. An entire goblin priesthood has developed within the Miradan goblins, who venerate the broken piles of metal brought by the priests by melting it down even faster than anything else. Since the Phyrexian invasion, the Squealstokes have shifted their exultion from the priesthood to that of Urabrask, 
Squealstokes have seized the task of stoking the furnace fires of Kuldotha. They sometimes fuel the furnace with a little too much zeal, occasionally throwing each other into the furnaces or anything else that happens to be scurrying around. If their efforts fall short, they throw themselves into the furnace, achieving the dual purpose of feeding the fires and avoiding an even more painful punishment at the hands of their overlords. Kraith, the Plain of Wrath is home to the Mog Goblins. Mogs, which were briefly mentioned in Domaria, are huge, brutish goblins with a perchance for cruelty and little in the way of brain power, even for a goblin. Their mindlessness made them ideal for the war against the Phyrexians by the Legacy. They are essentially trolls, but labelled goblins for tribal support by their lord and master, known as Rosewater. Ravnica The plain of Ravnica has a myriad of goblins found within its red guilds. Yet despite such numbers, they are given only a modicum of respect by their guildmates. This, however, is quite the accomplishment when compared to goblins of other planes. The Boros goblins are used as cannon fodder by the Legion. This is an improvement over the last decade, as it means that the Boros are no longer stuffing the goblins into the cannons. The Izzet League employ the clan known as the Izzet Goblins in the Mizium Foundry to smith metals for Neve Mizet, according to their Izzet signet. Is it significant this Izzet signet isn't smithed, if Izzet smiths in the Mizium signal Niv Mizet? Yes. Meanwhile, gruel goblins are treated with a high amount of esteem. Their wild berserk habits, which are often viewed precautiously by the other guilds, are seen as a valuable asset by the gruel, who only encourage them not to die so quickly when fights break out. Finally, the cult of Rakdos are affiliated with the Crocked Clan. Goblins of the Crocked Clan adorn themselves in spike-covered armor known as kill suits, which may be in reference to their enemies, or themselves. Tarkir The plain of Tarkir is home to two types of goblins, the Mardu and the Timur. The Mardu fight alongside orcs and humans when they go to war. For a goblin this means clinging to an allied warrior's horse until the battle begins, at which point you will be kicked off left to scrap on your own in a sea of enemies. The Temur goblins are wily and white-haired, though this should not be mistaken for a sign of wisdom. Temur goblins are often found in desolate regions, hungry and malnourished. Those lucky few will sometimes come upon a delicious feast of everything their aching body needs to rebuild itself. Other goblins. Zengikar. There are no goblins on the plain of Zendikar. That was just a myth made by Big Goblin to make you buy more goblin cards.